Hi everyone, it's Barry. This week's lesson is Pinchas. Pinchas was zealous for Hashem. What does it mean, zealous? He didn't care about his own life. He put his life at risk to really save the Jewish people because they had erred in their thinking. What was happening? They, they had they had to go by the land of Moab. And last week's Parsha, um, Bilam, Bilam went to curse the people. But he, in the last week's Parsha, at the end of the Parsha, the, the princes of their tribal country, they're going through uh, Jordan, the, the, the Moab, and uh, they sent out their princesses and they met with the, with the princes of Israel but they just didn't come out with a what they call a um, contemporary weapon the word for weapon in Hebrew is neshek but they realized they couldn't curse the people because we learned from last week's Parsha that Bilam that God put in Bilam's mouth a blessing about Israel so so these nations were so afraid that they said we we we, we can stop them so they did a very disastrous not so nice thing they sent the woman out naked with their uh, idol worship charms and of course the Jewish people are not supposed to be exposed to idol worship that's why they just you know we see the Ten Commandments and not to have any foreign images this and that and there was a whole law regarding trying to develop a life of kedusha which is holiness sanctification but the greatest greatest urge is the desire that's cheshek cheshek is a desire neshek is a weapon and neshika is a kiss so they in their wisdom decided to approach Israel from a different angle. They took their daughters and they didn't care the to send them out like prostitutes, naked, to entice the Jewish people and say, come, they gave their food, they gave their, their soul, they gave their bodies, and all of a sudden they got friendly they were excited. The Yetzahara, which is the desire. We have the heart. Two aspects of the heart, which I speak in my book. Soon to come out on um, Book Locker within two weeks. It's about the Yetzahara is the bad inclination, which really can be done for good. And the good inclination, that's what we're always trying to do. The good inclination has to do with the upper heart of, part of the body, which is the head, our thoughts, which are called the machshavot. We have to transform our thoughts when it reaches our heart, which has the yetzerah and the yetzer tov. Well, Hashem tells us to choose wisely because we have freedom of choice. In other words, whatever choice we decide in our, in our minds, in our hearts, that is the way we go and we, we are not become we don't become robots we become partners with Hashem but he wants us to choose from the Yetzir Tov from the good inclination and the Yetzir from the bad inclination the right choice towards Kedusha well how could it be a choice of Kedusha when they came naked woman with their love charms around their neck with food and drink anybody could be tempted to take their minds and say walk away walk away something happened They, the leaders of Balak and Bilam and the princes and the princes of both they all came out in the field in battle what was the Neshek? the Neshek was the, the love make love to this enemy of ours and we'll get them over to our side we will use the Neshika which is the kiss as a Neshek as a weapon so we see from the Hebrew language 
You know, what does that mean? A kiss? Weapon? What? What is that? No. The weapon is inside our own hearts. We have to decide in our own hearts. What's the Yetzir told? What's the good inclination? What's the bad inclination? What was the plan of the Jewish people? They had to cross Moab. They had to cross into this land of, of Eretz Israel from the other side, from the Jordan. Behind me actually is the Jordan. I don't know if you could see it. Let me see. You can't really see it. Uh, I don't know because it's not a good camera. But they crossed over, and the other side is Jordan. You could swim across from, from Elat to Jordan and get to Jordan. The Jews didn't swim across. They actually went around, and they came into the land of, of Israel to conquer the Canaanites, to stop them from their idol worship ways, because God says, my honor, my kavod is mine. It's not yours. You have to follow my plan. I revealed myself on Mount Sinai to give you a job to do. Not that you're so special, but you're special to me because I know you're going to listen and you're going to try at least to bring this sense of justice in the world, which I, the creator, have made the world and try to make it a better place. So here we are. He's with them in Egypt. He's with them out of Egypt. He's with. He splits the sea for them. But now they're coming into the land of Moab, and what's going on here? Didn't they see all the blessings and all the miracles for them? But humans are humans, and sometimes eh. But Hashem always says, you can always come back to me, even if you fail. And it's written, even in, in the Parsha, El rachum pachanu er chapayim v'chese be'emet, no se chese le'af, no se oven b'feshe v'chatav In other words, these arouse the... 13 attributes which God says you can tap into this energy of mine and become more godlike, more holy. If, and I will forgive you if you are actually repentant of, of, what, uh, of what you did. So here, Pintras took it upon himself he saw what was going on. He has a, a mixed, he has a lineage going back to Aaron, the, the Cohen, the high priest, the Jewish high priest. He's like a grandson. And he says, there's many commentaries on what happened. Did he act out his own? You know, he actually took a spear and he, and he threw it through both the prince of their country and the prince of Israel. And what happened as a result of that, this plague that came from upstairs, from the heavens, everybody saw that there, there was a confusion, turmoil in the camp. What are these people doing? They're supposed to go into the land of Israel. What's the detour here? Oh, the Yates of Tov is to get into the land. The Yates of Ra says, let's have a party before we get into the land. So Pindras, for his kavod or honor Hashem thought about it I'm going to put a spear through the two leaders of each country and for sure what's going to be the result of this I'm doing it because I know what Hashem wants from the Jewish people he doesn't want us to settle here he wants to see we have a job we have to go into the land so there is a, a Chazal that says he asked Moshe Rabbeinu and said, Moshe, what's going on here? Isn't this like against the Torah and stuff, what we just learned at Mount Sinai? I know it's new to us, so we don't fully understand, you know? But when you send these beautiful women, I mean, you know, what do you expect? So Moshe says, I don't remember the Halacha. You, Pinchas, you take care of it. So he took the spear. As soon as he got both of them, and he took the spear and he held it up like this, everybody in the camp on both sides said, because they knew the people were dying. People stopped dying as a result. And there were, in other words, they're doing with the Midianite woman, with the Moabite woman, the, their their interaction with them was, was such a way that it was a threat to their 
future existence. And Pinchas took nothing upon himself. The danger he caused to himself by, 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 by spearing these two heads of the two states. So, so what do we learn from this? This is something called as holy arrogance. It's, it's a kedusha that, that is is beyond reason. Of course, it says not to kill. But because the plague stopped in the desert, as a result of it, then both sides knew this was God's will. His action created everybody stop, stop the party. And what was his reward? He was reward, he rewarded the priesthood to be a priest. And they say that every Jewish or a Brit Milah, a circumcision, and every bar mitzvah, and every wedding between a Jewish couple, Elio Hanavi, is present. Who is the reincarnation of Elio Hanavi? Pinchas! Ah. Well, we don't know much about reincarnations. How do we know, how do we understand anything about the next world? Ah, but the Torah teaches us one thing. You do Torah and mitzvahs in this world and you get a reward in the world to come. But what was Pinchas's reward? He's neither, he didn't die because we all know he's at every Brit Milah, every circumcision, and every wedding. We all know his spirit exists even today. But it seems, it appears that he never died. So what does that mean? Is he in this world or the next world? That's a question I don't understand. This will only be answered when the Mashiach comes. At that time, we'll have some greater understanding as why all these things have to occur and even though we use our freedom of choice to choose to be holy, to choose to be Kodesh, to choose peace, they called his action Brit Shalom, which is a man of a peace. It was a, a covenant of peace. That's how it translates. So peace is not always a means, it's not always an end. It's something that needs to exist to create harmony. And because there was, un, there was chaos in the camp, his action, his holy action, he was rewarded. And with this re reward, he is neither in this world. He is in this world. And we don't, we don't really understand what happened to him, but we believe that his action of being zealous to Hashem, this is a bitul, it's called, just letting go of yourself and doing everything for the kavod or the honor of Hashem, which is the Holy Spirit, the Holy Creator. So, this is Parshat Pinchas, and I want you to Think about it. It gives us wonderful Yetzer Tov and Yetzer Of course, killing is not the answer. It's not the answer at all. Maybe that's why he's neither in this world or the next world. We don't know where he is, but we know he shows up at, you know, at the Bris Mila. When a, when a Jewish boy is eight days old, we have Kisei Al Eliyahu, which is Eliyahu Navi, which is Pinchas. So in the honor of Pinchas, and today is like, we had, we start the three weeks. What, what, what occurred last night? We, we, we had the uh, three weeks called the uh, Sheva Esrei Batamus. And the Sheva Esrei Batamus, the external walls of Jerusalem were, 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 were breached. Here's a picture in the house, I'll show you. 
what the external wall, I mean, this is just a picture, but the outer wall coming into Jerusalem, that was, that was this wall. So, so when that breach, they, they get, came closer to the Kotel, which is the holy, uh, also a, a inner wall uh, surrounding the inner um, things, the holy items on the Temple Mount, which is the, which is the gateway to heaven and which is the holiest place as designated in the Torah and also by the major religions. Everybody wants a piece of, that's where the Dome of the Rock is for our Muslim friends. And that's the Kotel is in that area right near there. And that was the place where Abraham went to sacrifice his son Isaac and he held back according to the commentaries. And this is a place of focus on the Creator because he asked the Jewish people to come into the land and set up a whole mark of atonement. So these three weeks right now mark the atonement for the two temples that were destroyed on Tisha B'Av. So in another 20 days, it's going to be the 9th of Av. Right now it's the 17th of Tammuz. So these three weeks are very soul-searching weeks because we have to understand what went wrong. The temples were destroyed, you know, by the Assyrian Greeks some 500 years before the Common Era and then by the Romans, CE, 70 CE, after the Common Era. What did we do? Our, 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 our sages tell us, you know, there were three things that occurred at that time. And one of them was still idol worship, spilling senseless blood, these things that were spoke about at Sinai, the, the people couldn't get it together. So our, when we are doing our jobs as Jews, and when we're being a light upon the nations, and we, where we are in harmony with the nation, with God, with our people, then we have growth, then we have development, then we become an inspiration to the world. This tiny little Israel is an inspiration to the world in the more technological things and what they've been able to accomplish since 1948 when they were granted a statehood as a result of what happened in the Holocaust and the displaced Jews had to come to Eretz Israel, the land of Israel, as a means of uh, reawakening the spirit of unity and brotherhood that Hashem wanted to happen to occur 2,500 years ago. So this is where we're at now. Hashem is still with the Jewish people. As we learn in Balaam and Balak, whoever curses the Jews are cursed, and what blesses the Jews are blessed. So with this in mind, maybe see the history a little bit differently. Maybe see the prejudice and the attitude a little differently. It says in our own tradition that, that Esau, which is Rome, called Edom, when they came into this, hates Yaakov because they were twin brothers. We're brothers. The brothers of Esau and the brothers of Yaakov and the brothers of Yishmael, the Muslim tradition, they're all brothers. They're brothers from another mother. We had a Hagar, but Hagar didn't get along with Yitzhak, so they were kicked out of this Temple Mount area. They were kicked out of Jerusalem. And then they formed their own nations. So you see? We're all connected, so we have to find a place of unity, a place of love, a place of less conflict in the world. So think about it, not only the Jews, but everybody, how they've acted with the Jews. And you know, for thousands of years, it's been going on. Maybe it's time to stop, because when the redemption comes the second time around, and it's coming, because God promised the holy fathers of our tradition, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he promised them. In your merit, not in anybody else's merit, because you knew how to listen to me. You know how to pass on to tradition. But when you give nishika 
to someone who is not in the same framework framework of mind as you, not the, that will believe in foreign elements that will take you away from me because you are my holy people and you are sanctified through my name and through my effort in trying to save you even when you go astray and even for the nations who go astray he only wants their success my success to you is stop seeing the Jews in a different light you don't have to see us as a light upon the nation but you, you can't be like Bilam set up to, to destroy the Jewish people right and God even put in his mouth he praised the Jewish people he, he had no choice because God can even intervene in the freedom of choice that we have for one another. So there's a combination here between choosing and we're going to all get this understanding soon. So you might as well be on the side of the winners than the losers. Nobody could keep this land other than the Jewish people. Even Mark Twain, the famous poet, the famous writer, he came to Israel, saw so it was desolated before the Jews came back in 1940. In 1948, in 75 years, in technology, in agriculture, in computers, in space, um, in chemistry, in physics, all these things. Albert Einstein taught, taught in Hebrew University. All these things were from Jews. And the nations who have kicked out the Jews like Spain now they want them to come back because they're, they're, they're muzzle, they're good luck well it's a little too late 500 years ago, 1492 Ferdinand and Isabella kicked out all the Jews they went to Portugal they went here, they went to Europe they were persecuted for 2,000 years Mar Amsterdam was somewhat good but New Amsterdam was better which was America but America today has also changed so if you're Jewish, think about Israel. Think about your place as a Jew. Think about learning to be what it means to be a Jew. And think about it is to have respect for all people, and most of all, respect for yourself. Because if you can't respect yourself, you can't respect anyone. And that's the purpose of being a Jew. There should be any division among Jews. A lot of the other nations have great divisions. So we have to be a little bit better. We have to be focused. We have to say good things about the the land of Israel. You know why? Because when the spies came in to survey the land of Israel in the Parsha before, two weeks before, they didn't speak nice. And it was on that day, Tisha B'Av, which is the holiday in three weeks, that both temples were destroyed. What do you mean? They said something just about a land. No. This was the land that God chose for the Jewish people. You hear that? For the Jewish people. But it was destroyed because they said something bad about the land. That the temple was destroyed 500 years before. The common era and 70 AD after the common era. And these three weeks are time to reflect because within three weeks and 20 days we'll have Tisha B'Av. And in Tisha B'Av, Jews all over the world fast no matter where they are, America, England, Australia, South Africa, the dispersion. It's not the place of the Jew to be on the outside. Well, nobody's telling me what to do, you know. I'm my own man, you know, this and that. Fine, you have choice. God will take you anywhere you want to go because that's your choice and that's how kind he is. But it doesn't necessarily mean it's good for you. So everybody choose well be in good health, good peace, and Shabbat Shalom. From Eilat.